All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for, um, for checking in with us tonight. Um, we are here tonight to learn about the opportunities uh, that you have to be part of the International Baccalaureate Program. My name is Mr. Bilterman, and I have with us two of our, um, our seniors uh, who I'm going to introduce here in just a few minutes. The way this is going to be structured is I'm going to just go over some of the basics and give you the nuts and bolts of what the program is and what schedules would look like <clears throat> for students, uh, and then talk a little bit about the advantages of the program, uh, and uh, then, then talk about the procedure for, uh, for applying. So we'll go over all that information. This is being recorded, so if anybody comes in a little bit late, uh, they'll be able to see this. We'll, uh, we'll put link this up to our Facebook page tomorrow uh, in case you come in, anybody comes in late. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. My name is Mr. Bilterman. Uh, I've been at Johnson for 21 years, and I've been coordinating this program uh, for the last 18 years. We have some wonderful uh, teachers and staff here that help deliver this program and some great students. Um, on the screen here, you should be able to see a map, and on that map, is uh, where Johnson's located. So our school is located uh, in Thunderbolt um, on the east side of, of downtown Savannah, um, basically. And um, the school is, is uh, a rel relatively new, newly constructed school. It's been around since the 50s, um, but it, the building itself uh, is about uh, 16 years old. Um, so we have a nice, relatively new facility. Um, this is the uh, mission. I'm going to try to avoid PowerPointing you guys to death, so I'm going to skip over some of these. Um, but our mission as a school is not to equal, but to excel. Um, we have three uh, international baccalaureate programs at the school. We have what's called the Middle Years Program, and Ms. Finelli uh, is our coordinator of that program, and she's going to uh, talk to you for just a minute about what that's all about. We have the Career Program. Um, and, that, and we have the diploma program. And what I'm here to talk to you about tonight is the specialty program, which is our diploma program. And students um, track through the, our IB middle years program uh, and then get into the, what's called the diploma program in the 11th grade and stay with it through the 12th grade. Uh, the career program is for students who are already coming to Johnson by virtue of where they live. Uh, and we wanna make sure we have the opportunity to take a few IB classes and have that program for them as well, so everybody at the school can benefit. The diploma program is, if you can see, you're looking at this um, uh, graphic here, I'm just going to go over what the program is um, just briefly here. So the IB diploma program uh, is all about international mindedness. IB is, uh, the acronym stands for International Baccalaureate. So international mindedness is embedded into the curriculum uh, in many, many ways. Um, if you move inward, there are six core subjects that students take. Um, so what we do is in ninth and 10th grade, they engage in the middle years program that Ms. Finelli, as I mentioned, coordinates. And they take honors classes. And we'll have somewhere between, I think, about 50 and 75 students coming into ninth grade next year. And those students will be uh, put in classes and honors classes together with fellow uh, students that have been accepted and admitted into the program, into the specialty program, and then tracked to go towards the diploma program, which is this, which is a two-year-long program in 11th and 12th grade. So the six subjects that they take are studies in language and literature, and they take all of these subjects, all right? Studies in language and literature is, is for, for at Johnson is English. There are about 4,000 schools around the world that have this program, and they the each one of these subjects has a variety of different options that schools can choose from. Our school for this particular subject area chooses IB language and literature. Um, moving along here, we also have language acquisition. And there are obviously a number of world languages that students can engage in all around the world, but we choose to offer Spanish and Mandarin Chinese here at our school. Um, in the sciences, uh, the sciences that we offer, the science that we offer is called IB environmental systems and societies. So the students in ninth grade for science take honors of physical science, or excuse me, honors physics and honors chemistry and honors biology in ninth and 10th grade. So before they even get to 11th grade, they have engaged in three pretty rigorous uh, science courses to get ready for that IB science course. Um, the arts, they can choose from IB art, visual art, where they do painting and sculpting and drawing and uh, kind of based on what their interest level is and what they want to focus on in the visual arts. Uh, if they don't want to do visual art, they can take IB film where they make movies and do documentaries. And we got a grant 
recently that allowed us to buy a lot of technology to help students make their own films. Uh, they learn about filmmaking from all over the world. It's a really neat class. We have IB Dance as an option where students dress down just like they would for um, when we get back to normal, um, hopefully, which will be soon, um, when we're actually in person. They, they'll dress down just like they would for, phys for physical education or, or team sports or whatever, and they dance, and they choreograph their own dance, and they learn about dancers from all over the world. Um, so those are the arts. Uh, and then mathematics um, is another course that all of our students take. There's an IB math class. They do honors algebra one, honors algebra two, and honors geometry in the ninth and 10th grade to get ready for that course. Um, if they've already had algebra one, which I'll mention here in a minute, they don't have to redo that obviously in the, in the ninth grade. And then finally, there's individuals and societies, which is all the students take history. Um, it's a two year long course like, like these other courses are. Uh, but if they do not want to take dance, art, or film, they can choose to take IB psychology, which is a second subject from that area and not have to worry about the arts. Um, so for all of these courses, there are exit exams and they take um, assessments at the end of these courses and they can earn college credit for their high school coursework based on how, they, how well they do on those assessments. So working our way in just a little bit more, all the students write an extended essay, which is a research paper. Um, a lot of colleges report that when students get to college, they don't know how to write a research paper. Um, but we're finding that our students who go to college do know how to do that because they have to do it in high school. They pick their subject and what they want to focus on, what their research question is. And we pair them up with a teacher uh, and, the, and that teacher helps walk them through the process of doing research and writing a paper and getting it just right and all that. So, so that's another aspect of the program. Uh, and they also take a philosophy class um, where they get to engage in more uh, in-depth critical thinking. If you were the type of student that sits around your uh, history class, for example, and wonders how uh, the teacher that's teaching about something that happened 400 years ago, how that teacher know that, knows that that actually happened the way he or she is saying it happened, this class is for you. It makes you think critically and ask um, in-depth questions about what you're being taught. Um, the students report that they really, really like that class. Um, and then finally, there's what's called creativity, activity, and service. And that is where we, we basically want our students to do stuff outside of school, um, engaging in Model UN or doing community service hours, um, engaging in sports if they want. Uh, we kind of let them pick what they want to do, but they got to document their hours so we can show they come out of high school as a well-rounded student. And colleges love that. And then working our way in, we teach a little bit different and we uh, approach our learning a little bit different uh, in IB. Um, and at the very center of that is what's called the IB learner, learner profile. So the most important aspect of this program is that when students leave, we want them all to exemplify all of these attributes. Um, just as an example, we want students to be good communicators, right? So embedded into the curriculum is they have to write a research paper, an extended essay, so they know how to write and communicate in a written manner. Um, in language acquisition, they have to learn another language so that they are communicate in a second language. Uh, in the theory of knowledge, they have to do an oral presentation in front of their peers so they know how to speak in front of their classmates. In IB English, they do all kinds of um, communicating in written form and presentations and other things. So all of these attributes are really embedded into the curriculum. And this is just to give you a sampling of what a schedule would look like uh, over a four year period. So as I mentioned, um, you know, students take honors classes in ninth grade. If you've had honors ninth grade English already, you don't have to take that again, obviously. If you've had Spanish one, you don't have to take that again. You'll just move right ahead to Spanish two. So honors classes ninth and 10th, and then in 11th grade, they do um, the courses that are uh, classified as IB classes. Um, and if you're just arriving, this session is being recorded and will be available on our Facebook page. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat um, and I'll make sure to check that before we're done. Or you can just send an email to johnsonib at sccpss.com. Um, I'm gonna have Ms. Spinelli talk for just a minute. She coordinates the, um, the middle years program, which is what our ninth and 10th graders focus on. So Ms. Spinelli. Ms. Finelli, are you there? Okay, I'm gonna keep going until she comes back and I'll go back to that slide. Sorry about that, I don't know what happened there. 
Um, so we'll come back and talk about that in just a minute. Um, the, to give you an idea of what a ninth grade schedule looks like, this is this is one of our ninth graders uh, students uh, schedule. So they take classes over uh, for, for they take four classes first semester for an hour and a half for each class. Then they take four classes the second semester um, for uh, an hour and a half for each class. Um, so I circled in red what this particular student takes in semester one. This student didn't have Algebra 1, so she had to take that uh, in the first semester. And then second, for second semester, that student's going to take Algebra 2. This first semester, Biology. Second semester, World History. An elective first semester, third block. Second semester, Spanish 2. This student had Spanish 1 in ninth grade. This student had ninth grade English, so we put her in a oral, written, communication, speech, honors class so she can have an English class in ninth grade. And then, then this science class, chemistry, just to give you an idea of what a class schedule looks like for a student. And that's what your schedule would sort of look like if you came here um, in the uh, in the ninth grade next year. Does anybody have questions about scheduling at all or any questions about the format of the um, of the program? No. OK, I think Miss Finelli's back. I'm going to um, Miss Finelli, are you there? Yes, I am now. I'm sorry. That's okay. The moment, the moment you passed over, my internet, I, I, my phone died. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. So glad that you're here. Uh, the MYP at Johnson is um, an extension of those of you who are already at Coastal Middle School, for example, might be participating in the MYP program already. It, it encompasses five years, typically, of preparation for the diploma program or the career program. At Johnson, we provide years four and five. So that's a question we get a lot about when you come to Johnson because the diploma program officially begins in 11th grade. But when you come, you are in um, sort of like a magnet within a magnet, right? Um, because you are uh, taking honors classes, taking classes that are geared towards developing the skills that you're going to need to be a successful IB learner. Um, Similar to the to the diploma program, we have our rings, right? Um, just like with diploma program, our subject areas are on that outside. Um, still with that international mindedness, you know, as the focus. We have action in service. So rather than doing cast hours, students are encouraged to do community service projects and personal projects that offer them an opportunity to reflect and um, think about, you know, something that they've either taught themselves or taught others and what they learned from that process. And then um, the, the approaches to learning and the approaches to teaching are really geared as a way to assist you in developing the skills that you'll need um, to be lifelong learners. And of course, just like with DP, um, it's very inquiry driven. You're encouraged to think outside the box. You're encouraged to be challenged. So, um, you know, uh, when considering doing this, you know, the, the goal of ninth and 10th grade is to really prepare you so that you can be successful in your um, IB diploma classes. So it's, you know, if you come to Johnson, you do have two years of this program in an effort to gear you up and get you ready for the diploma program. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. So that's the, the little bit about the nuts and bolts of what the program is. Um, and now I want to talk to you about what the advantages of the program are. So this is a picture that was taken at the beach. We take our kids on field trips, uh, you know, when we get back to normal, which I'm confident we will relatively soon. I, none of us can wait for that, I know. Um, this is a photograph of our kids at Tybee. We took them on a field trip for the, the day. These are some of our seniors uh, from two years ago. They're actually pictured with some students from Germany. We have um, we started three years ago an exchange program with uh, a school in Bremen, Germany, in northern Germany, whereby those students came and stayed with some of our students for about a week and a half and went to school with our students. Uh, and then our students, some of them were able to go over there at a relatively inexpensive price because they were housed at their students' houses and they went to school with them. And it's all about an international uh, mindedness. So we, we've made this arrangement and uh, we hope to continue it once, uh, once COVID is over. Um, but they're, they're celebrating here. They're, they're, these students are all about to graduate. Uh, it says at the bottom there, in recent years, Johnson IB students averaged $136,706 in scholarship awards, and that does not include the HOPE scholarship. So one of the advantages, tangible advantages, is scholarship uh, awards. 
Another tangible advantage of the program is college admissions. Um, so colleges love students who can speak another language, who can write an essay, um, who can speak in front of others, who've done service hours, who have engaged in rigorous coursework during high school. They love that, and that's borne out by these statistics. So there's, I won't go through all these, but there's two Georgia schools on this list. Georgia Tech up in Atlanta, one of the best public universities in the country, in fact, in the world. 81% um, of IB students get in to Georgia Tech. That's just not our IB students, but IB students from all around the world, relative to 59% of everybody else who gets into Georgia Tech. So there's a 22% leg up for IB students versus everybody else. Um, Emory is a private school up uh, in Atlanta. 78% of IB students get into Emory who apply. Only 42% of everybody else gets in. So there's a 36% advantage. This is just a sampling of some of the schools that were, that were studied as part of this study that was done a couple years ago. Um, there were uh, dozens of schools on there, and every single one, there was a higher rate of acceptance for IB kids versus everybody else. Um, if you're just arriving to this session, um, it is being recorded. So if you're getting here a little late, it'll be available on our Facebook page. Uh, and if you have questions, just put it in the chat or um, send me an email. At John, send us an email, rather, at johnsonib at sccps.com. Uh, some of the other advantages is about 97% of our kids uh, enroll in college. Uh, some of them, a few of them get in the military, a few of them get in the workforce, but this is intended to be mostly a college prep program, uh, and almost all of our kids are enrolling in an institution of higher learning right after high school. Uh, these are some of the places they're going. Uh, honestly, most of them go to Georgia Public Universities because of Hope Scholarship, um, which is a wonderful program funded by the lottery, whereby if you get an 80 uh, GPA, a 3.0 GPA, and you take a certain number of AP honors or IB classes, you're eligible for a good portion of your tuition getting paid for um, by the state. Um, so most of our students will go to UGA, they'll go to Georgia Southern, um, but some of them go to private schools in state or out of state. Um, we had a student go to Cornell a couple years ago, so um, they're, they're getting into some, to some really good schools, some HBCUs like Morehouse and Spelman. Um, so that's where they're going to college. In terms of the uh, preparation for the SAT, which is the Scholastic Aptitude Test, because our students are taking rigorous coursework in 9th, 10th, and 11th grade, they're, they're doing very, very well on their SATs better than the county average, better than the state average, better than the national average. And that's year over year, we've seen that for, for 20 years, okay? Um, another advantage is course credit. Uh, so for those six IB subjects that students take, they take, as, as we mentioned earlier, uh, assessments at the end of those courses. Those assessments cost the district about $950 per student, uh, but the district picks up all of that cost uh, there are a lot of IB schools up in Atlanta that are public schools where that is paid for by the students or the families. That's not the case at our school. Um, so that allows students to get college credit. Our kids, on average, after they leave, earn about two courses worth of semester credit, which is about eight semester hours of credit. Some of them get none because they don't do well on the test. Some of them get a whole year's worth. So it just depends. That's the average. Um, Another great advantage is they, they do community service hours. This is a photograph of our kids at a uh, camping trip that we uh, take them on every year up until COVID. Uh, this is at Fort McAllister, and we combined with the fun we had there, uh, a community service project where they were cleaning up um, debris from a, a trail that was destroyed by Hurricanes Irma and Matthew. Um, they were rehabilitating that trail, and we had a lot of fun doing it. Um, now, as far as the admissions requirements, so. Um, these are the admissions requirements to get into our program coming in at the ninth grade. So I, you see there that standardized test scores are crossed out. That's because the district um, made the decision to eliminate that as a requirement due to COVID. Um, so to get in, you have to have a cumulative GPA of 80 in your core academic classes. So that, and we look at first semester, seventh grade, second semester, seventh grade, and first semester, eighth grade. So just as an example, if you get a 75 in a class in seventh grade for the year, let's just say English, but you got an 85 in your science class, um, that would average out to an 80. So it's not a cumulative of 80 in every single class. It's an overall average of 80, right, in all of your core academic classes. So that doesn't include health and PE and things like that. That includes uh, your core courses, okay? 
Uh, the information at the bottom, the, excuse me, you have to have a conduct grade of an S. Information at the bottom there is just for students who are transferring in. Uh, so they have to meet some certain uh, uh, test requirements. Um, again, if you're just arriving, here's the information you'll need to, um, to ask questions. And this is being recorded. Um, the applications are available on February 1st. Uh, you have about, what, 18 days to apply, and it's all done online. The lottery will take place on March the 8th. Uh, we may or may not be in the lottery. We'll see how many students um, get accepted and choose to come here. Um, our current uh, Savannah Chatham County Public School System students do not need to submit transcripts and test scores. We have all that uh, on our system as a district. Um, but if you are from out of county or from a private school, you have to submit your transcripts, your test scores, and your proof of address. And all that information is submitted on this uh, website right here, choice.sccps.com. Um, and I am going to fast forward here to um, Armani. Armani, I'm going to ask you to um, just introduce yourself. We have two of our current 12th grade students, and uh, they're set to graduate in May. And I'm going to ask them just to, for a minute or two, tell them a little bit about yourself, themselves, and then um, I'll show their, what their course schedule is. Uh, and you guys can ask questions in the chat or just raise your hand and, or just unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. So Armani. Hello, everyone. As you can see, um, my name is Armani Jones. I'm currently a senior at Soul C. Johnson High School, where I am in the IB program, the DP. Uh, and um, I went to Coastal Middle School. Uh, I was in the NYP program there. And one thing about Johnson is that I really enjoy, uh, it's a family there. So once you're in IB, we stick together from basically ninth grade all the way up to your senior year. You stay with the same people, you stay with the same teachers, and it's like a school within a school, kind of, if you want to think of it that way. Um, I really do like it. It also teaches you multiple things like time management. So if you do not have time management, it's like, okay, you know, you got to push yourself I have a lot of work and then I need to get these things done. And it's, it gets you ready for college. It teaches you how to write properly, how to know what you're doing, how to use your vocabulary words, how to speak to people in a public audience and stuff like that. And I really, I really love the program, honestly. And it's just, it's really good. So as you can see on the screen, um, this is my schedule this year. So I have environmental science, uh, English theory of knowledge, also known as TOK, dance, um, 20th century history, Spanish two, business and administrating. That's work-based learning. So um, once you get an IB, you have an ADB day schedule and you have four days. You have four classes on one day and then the other four classes on another day. But I only have really seven classes, um, work-based learning. That is like a, a class that you can take if you have a job or anything and um, you don't, you take in math your junior year of IB, you can take that to fill it up. Uh, so one thing, my favorite class is dance. I really enjoy that class because we learn about different dance techniques that's all throughout the world. So Dr. Quinlan, she's my teacher. She teaches us uh, ballet. We learn Irish. We've learned um, just a lot of cultural dances. And it's really cool to see how things are different from not just looking out and not looking in is really cool to understand those. And that is pretty much it. So if you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Any questions for Armani? You notice there's no math on there. That's because they double up their math in the 11th grade and they, they kind of get rid of their IB math class and test out of that in 11th grade. And that leaves them with an opening in their schedule. Uh, basically 25% of their schedule open and Armani chose to do a work-based learning. So she basically can, uh, most days when we're in person, if we were in person, would be able to leave early from school. Okay, so the second uh, student I wanna introduce is uh, Abby. Abby's also um, uh, a member of the class of 2021. Abby. Good evening, my name's Abby. Um, I also went to Coastal Middle School and I was in the NYP program. Um, and at Johnson, I'm in the DP um, IB program. My experience at Johnson and IB has been really good. I also do want to mention that it is very possible to do an extracurricular activity 
all being an IB um, as well. I cheer for Johnson all four years of high school. However, the main thing about IB, as Armani mentioned, is time management. Um, you'll without a doubt have homework every night and it's a lot of work. However, don't let that be your setback because it's better to have that eye opener now as opposed to waiting until college and just being really overwhelmed and stressed with all the work um, and not knowing how to manage your time. So once you adjust to being able to manage your time, it's definitely um, manageable, to, manageable to be an IB as well as doing an extracurricular activity. Um, this is my schedule. And me and Armani have the same schedule. The only thing that's different is psychology. Um, in psychology, we basically just go in further depth about like how the mind works and different, um, like the biological factors of the brain and different behavioral parts of the brain. Um, my favorite class would be theory of knowledge, just because we talk about like why things are the way they are and like why we think the way we think. Um, it's kind of like a philosophy class, if any of y'all are interested in that. But, um, and I also have work-based learning as well, um, just because we are able to have that free class um, since we took math our junior year. So we do have that free period that we're able to pick like an extra class to kind of help our GPA as well for our senior year, um, which is why I picked work-based learning. Awesome, Abby, thank you so much. Um, I think there is a question in the chat. You both have fantastic senior photos. <laughs> uh, if anybody has any questions, you can unmute yourself. Um, I'll just go over a few more things and then we'll be all done unless people have questions. Um, Ms. Yes, Ms. go Ms. ahead. Freshman. Yes, sir. Um, is, it, is it like we need to go and Zoom because, well, I'm, I'm, I'm from eighth grade. Mm -hmm. um, do I need to get on Zoom? Uh, for to to be part of this, you mean? What do you what do you mean? Well, Miss Miss Edwards just um Miss Edwards sent sent me um an email to this one. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure if I'm in the right zone. Uh, so this is all about the Johnson International Baccalaureate Specialty Program. She was probably just wanting you to get more information and show you that this was one of your options. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, uh, before I close out, I just want to show you some pictures of some of the things that our kids do. These are some kids on their way to Germany a couple years ago. These are our kids. We took them to an international festival down in Orlando at Disney World a couple years ago. Um, so we get to have a lot of fun. These are our students at the Model United Nations, which they take part in up in Statesboro. Um, these are our students uh, interviewing some Vietnam veterans. Uh, and they put those uh, audio interviews in the National Archives, which is pretty cool. Our students participate in plays. Um, they participate in chess club. Um, they're on the football team. That kid you see jumping right there is one of our um, wonderful IB seniors who's uh, Corey's great kid. So even though IB is a lot of work, um, we find that the kids who are engaging in extracurriculars are IB kids. They, they, they love getting involved. They're in the band. Um, they get scholarships for basketball, like these two wonderful young women, Jemiah and Jasmine, who graduated a couple years ago. Um, best friends that got college scholarships for their basketball and for their IB work. Um, this was a field trip we took kids on uh, downtown doing a walking tour of downtown Savannah. Um, this was a service activity where one of our, our we take our students to read to um, elementary age kids. Um, every now and then. So um, the last thing I'll show you, and then I will shut up, are these two slides. Um, th these are reports we get from IB after students take their exams and their assessments. And again, these assessments cost about $950 per student, all right? I blocked out the names. Um, and what I did here is I highlighted the courses for which these students were eligible for college credit. So this student did well enough on his IB assessment that he was able to get college credit for Spanish, history, biology, and math. This student also earned the HOPE scholarship on top of all that. And on top of that, he earned $247,192 in scholarship offers. He wasn't able to take all of that money um, because these come, came from different colleges, but this student had some wonderful opportunities as a result of his work in IB. This is another student. Um, this student is actually at Mercer right now. 
this student only did well enough on her IB exams to get college credit for three classes, English, Spanish, and math. This student also got the Hoop Scholarship and was offered $734,704 in scholarship offers, of which she took only about 10% of that, but that 10% is allowing her to go to Mercer largely for free in terms of her tuition. So she'll graduate without much student debt, if any. Um, so it is beneficial um, and does provide some great opportunities going forward for students. So with that, I'm going to shut uh, my mouth here for, for the remainder of the time, unless anybody has any questions. Um, we presented a lot of information here, and I want to make sure that we give you all time to ask any questions that you have about anything about our school, the application process, uh, IB, anything. So does anybody have questions? Uh, yes, sir. Um, how does the lottery work? Okay, so the way the lottery works is um, we will set a uh, threshold of a certain number of students that we can accept, which in years past has been 75. I'm not sure if that's what it'll be this year. And if there are, let's just say hypothetically, there's 81 students who gained admission to our program and 81 students who chose us as first choice, um, then, there, then the lottery will essentially take 75 of those students and they'll get offered admission and then there will be six students that will be put on a wait list, right? And that wait list will just be ranked one through six. And it is not dependent upon your GPA or anything like that. It's very, it's random. Um, it's a computerized lottery. Um, that's if we're in the lottery. Now, we have had to be in the lottery uh, in the past, but in recent years, we have not been. Uh, we may have to be in it again this year because Windsor Forest is not offering this program. The only other... Uh, school in the county that offers IB is St. Andrews, and that's $15,000 a year to go there. Um, so we may or may not need to be in the lottery, um, but if we are, uh, that's kind of how it'll work, okay? And you would be notified along that process, and the lottery takes place on March the 8th. Kinsley, did that answer your question? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, Any? Mr. Yes. Well, I'm kind of sorry about um when I leave meeting because I was confused for a second. Okay. That's okay. No problem. Any other questions? Does your school offer beta club? Um, yeah, we, we do. We have a lot of different extracurriculars, like, as I mentioned, Model UN, Chess Club, stuff like that, DECA, FLB, F, FLBA, excuse me, Future Business, FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America, excuse me. But they're not, uh, they're not um, part of the curriculum of the IB program. It's just stuff that you do, um, you know, is an extracurricular activity. Okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'm getting a question in this chat. Does Johnson offer culinary arts for the IB program? So culinary arts is not one of the subjects that's offered through IB. However, um, there are options for you to take electives in the ninth grade, in the 10th grade, and in the 12th grade. And we have courses um, that are food, nutrition, and wellness, and different courses where you learn about food preparation and the culinary arts that you can take as electives. Um, Good evening. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's in reference to the Air Force ROTC. Um, I was reading that you can earn a scholarship as well, and I want to find out some information about the Upward Bound program. Um, so relative to ROTC, we do have ROTC, and students are able to, IB kids are able to take it, and we have had a lot of IB kids do um, ROTC in the ninth grade, uh, in the 10th grade, and in the 12th grade. Their 11th grade schedule is kind of full. Um, so they'd be able to do it as an extracurricular, but not, not during the school. And Upward Bound is a program that where we coordinate and, community and work with Savannah State through their Upward Bound program. Um, you know, sometimes, some years we have a lot of kids do it, some years we don't, it kind of depends. But that's also something that's done um, outside of the purview of, the, um, of their course schedule in the IB program. But we certainly support them and help guide them along. And their counselors help hook them up with programs like that. Thank you. And also the game design club. Could you tell me a little bit about that game design? Game design. We, you know, 
Um, we have a lot of students who are very interested in that. I don't know that we have a formal, um, that's something I'd have to follow up with you on. Um, a lot of things have just been different due to COVID, obviously. Um, but I will follow up with you on that. If you don't mind, could you put your email address in the chat and I'll follow up with you on that and, and get with the person who's been involved with that in the past and get you some sure. specific information. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any other questions? Um, from from high school, um, from high school, do we do we from do we have some like some report cards that we used to have like like from some other schools? Um, so you do definitely get a report card, um, and uh, you know that be part of your transcript when you apply to college. Colleges will see your 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 grades and. Uh, I, I do want to emphasize to you all about Hope Scholarship because a lot of kids come into ninth grade not knowing what Hope Scholarship is. It's an amazing program and, and, and your grades, first semester, ninth grade, count just as much on as your grades do in 12th grade. Um, so make sure that when you come in to Johnson or whatever school you choose to go to, that you keep those grades up um, because that will count for Hope Scholarship. And if you fall behind on Hope, um, it's hard to make up ground. IB classes and AP classes, and we don't do AP at Johnson, we do, we don't do advanced placement, we do IB. With IB classes, every single one of those courses, on a four-point scale, you get 0.5 added for the HOPE scholarship purposes. So if you get a 3.0, you are eligible for the HOPE scholarship if you take a certain number of, HOPE, of honors IB, AP classes. And for the IB classes, you get 0.5 added to that four-point scale. If you get a 3.7, you're eligible for Zell Miller Hope Scholarship, which is like your entire tuition that's paid for. And again, you know, there's, the way you can get a 4.5 is by getting an A in a class. And then if you have an AP or IB class, you get 0.5. So that 4.5 might balance out against the course of student struggles and it only got a 3.0. In. That 0.5 comes in huge when it comes to Hope Scholarship um, consideration. Um, and Ms. Green, I did receive your email and I'll send you that information tomorrow. Or Miss, excuse me, Miss Miss Duncan. Sorry about that. Um, any other questions anyone has? No questions. All right. Well, we want to thank you all for coming. And um, in the past, we've been able to offer uh, shadowing programs, but we obviously can't do that this year, unfortunately. Um, so, if you want more information, please don't hesitate to send us an email. Um, I'll put my our email address up here in just a second. Um, and we also have a Facebook page where you can follow us. Um, there is the information there with our email and the Facebook connection. So thank you all for coming very much. If, again, if you, we'd love to see you guys as students at our school next year. And you all have a great evening. And don't hesitate to reach out if you have any additional questions. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Armani and Abby and Miss Finelli. Thank you guys.